A few days ago, Frank Warren uh, came out and seemed to suggest that he wasn't particularly happy with the fact that ESPN Bob Arum want Tyson Fury to have an interim fight before facing Deontay Wilder again. He was saying that it's been his plan to have the rematch immediately without any kind of interim fight. So don't blame me, blame ESPN and Bob Arum. Well, he's updated what he said now, right? And he's put out this statement on uh, boxingscene.com where he's saying that yes, he understands fans want to see the fight immediately, but this is a business and his broadcast and promotional partners in the United States think that it's a good idea to build the fight up and have the rematch maybe in June. He says, nobody's avoiding anybody and the occasion won't suffer from being shifted from May, June to autumn. The magnitude of such an epic showdown will only increase. So now Frank Warren, at least in my interpretation of it, is kind of backtracking a little bit. I wonder whether his partners in the US have had a little word in his ear, like, don't make us look bad. Don't make out as though you didn't know exactly what was going to happen in terms of the interim fight prior to, uh, uh, you know, the rematch with Deontay Wilder. So don't make out as though you didn't know that was going to happen. And indeed, in this statement, Frank Warren says, I'm fully on board with the plan. <laughs> you see? He says, like it or not, at the end of the day, both fighters want to be paid well because it's a dangerous fight for both of them. And they obviously will want to maximize their earnings. So that is the thinking behind this move. And I am fully on board with it. So look, here he says, a few of my comments to various media on Wednesday have been subject to some inevitable topspin by certain sections. And I certainly didn't blame anyone for the delay in making the fight. Well, again, it's not about top spin, uh, Frank. It did come across as though you were blaming Aram top rank and that you weren't on board with it. That's how it came across. So it's not about top spin. It's about how you're coming across. It, it came across as though you were trying to save face and, you know, pass the buck. But now he's saying that he's fully on board with the plan to have this interim fight. So yeah, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I think it's just Frank being Frank. And Frank Warren is somebody who likes to, as most boxing promoters do, but particularly Frank Warren, he likes to take the moral high ground and he likes to make out as though he has more integrity than his competitors. That's the way Frank Warren likes to portray himself, in my opinion. Uh, but quite a lot of the time you can catch Frank Warren out contradicted himself. I mean, we know the whole StubHub situation. Has he even mentioned the word StubHub since the first Wilder Fury fight? Because the tickets for that were sold on StubHub. <laughs> has he even mentioned StubHub since? Uh, yeah, Warren has been caught out numerous times, contradicted himself, uh, saying things which were seemingly questionable, etc., etc. And maybe this is another example of Frank Warren, in my opinion, trying to pass the buck of blame, but for, he has he had to have known that this deal, the ESPN deal, was going to make the Wilder fight more difficult. He had to have known that. Frank Warren has been in the boxing game for decades, and Frank Warren is a very shrewd man. The man's not an idiot. He might have a colossal ego, but he's not an idiot. He's a very, very shrewd, at least when it comes to boxing, he's a very shrewd man. He knows the boxing business. He knows how things work. He knows the politics better than 99% of people. So he must have known as soon as this ESPN deal was even being spoken about behind closed doors, he must have known the implications were that it would make the Deontay Wilder fight a lot more difficult. So, yeah, that is what that is. And the same for Tyson Fury, by the way. Because when this deal was done, and I've mentioned this in many videos previously, but Tyson Fury often says disingenuous things. On, on a regular basis, he says dishonest, disingenuous things. 
when this deal was first announced, Tyson Fury came out and said, this should make the Wilder fight easier to make, not more difficult. People, come on. When the entire boxing media and probably 95% of fans all knew that this would make the Deontay Wilder fight more difficult, how on earth was Tyson Fury coming out his, out his mouth saying it will make the Wilder fight easier to make? Like, Tyson Fury's not stupid either. He came out saying that. Why? Because he was hoping to try and make out that it's Wilder who's the reason for the fight not happening. I think that was what was going through Tyson Fury's mind when he said that about the Wilder rematch and the ESPN deal. In his head, he was thinking, okay, I don't want to make out as though I've just made a move that's going to jeopardize the Wilder fight. So let me say that actually it's going to be easier. And therefore, if the fight don't happen, maybe I can lay the blame on Wilder somehow and manipulate the public and get them to believe that narrative. I think that's what Tyson Fury's thought process was when he made that comment. And he probably made that comment off the cuff, you know, after being asked questions at the uh, BT press conference. But yeah, <laughs> both guys, I think, have a habit of uh, being economical with the truth at times. And they engage in PR just as much as Eddie Hearn does. Because people act like Eddie Hearn is the only promoter in boxing who engages in PR, who exaggerates, who, you know, omits certain facts from statements that he makes conveniently. No, he's not the only person who does that. Frank Warren does that. And Tyson Fury certainly does that. Tyson Fury might be the slickest of all of them at doing it. But he's been doing it so long and so often that people are starting to catch him out more and more now. But yeah, there it is, people. Frank Warren putting out a statement explaining the reasons for the delay and um, the wilder fight not happening right now. And of course, Tyson Fury, the man who says he doesn't care about money, now he says the fight should uh, build and build so he can make more money. How <laughs> well, he don't care about money. And all his fans are running around saying he don't care about money. No, no, he cares about money. He's in this for the money. Not only for the money, of course, because there are other things you could do for money, but he's good at boxing, very good. He's been doing it all his life or most of his life. And he's in his prime, the prime years of his life. He's not necessarily in his prime condition, but he's in the prime years for a fighter. He's like, what, 29, 30 years old now, Tyson Fury? So it's right around now that he's going to have the opportunity to make life-changing sums of money. And so he has to take it. So I, I do not hate on Tyson Fury um, making this move, delaying the Wilder fight and building it up. I, don't, I can't hate on that. I'm all for fighters maximizing their earning potential. The only issue I have is with Tyson Fury misleading people. Yeah, If you want to delay the fight, build it up, have it down the line, then be straight up about that from the beginning. But yet Tyson Fury is a guy who ridicules other fighters. You know, let's say that Anthony Joshua, okay, just to play devil's advocate, let's entertain the narrative a lot of people are pushing that Anthony Joshua delayed the Deontay Wilder fight to build it up more. He didn't admit to that, of course, but let's just entertain that narrative. Tyson Fury was absolutely slaughtering Anthony Joshua for not taking the Wilder fight. But here we have Tyson Fury pulling out of the Wilder rematch and deciding to take an interim fight instead. And there is no guarantee, by the way, that the Wilder rematch is even going to happen later on this year. People are just assuming it will, like people assumed this rematch was, was going to happen next. Well, don't assume, man. Tyson Fury has now got a platform in ESPN in the United States. He can now do big fights against the Joey Parkers and the Kubrat Pulevs and etc. He can do big fights against those guys. And I say big in inverted commas, but big meaning he's been given a lot of money in his ESPN contract. You know, he's been kind of given carte blanche here. So... Yeah, he can go that route. He can maximize his earnings and good luck to him doing that. But it's 
hypocritical. That's basically what I'm saying. The way that Tyson Fury has done this deal and the way he's behaving is massively hypocritical. And it shows you his nature. It shows you that he's going to do hypocritical things. He's an opportunist. When he sees an opportunity to attack and ridicule an opponent in the media, he's going to do it. But don't, go, don't start thinking that Tyson Fury won't himself go and do that very same thing sometime in the future if it's convenient for him. It's like people are constantly banging on about how Tyson Fury goes and fights champions in their backyards, right? The, the, and, and that is often used as like a subliminal diss to Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder because, of course, they didn't win world titles in, in the champion's backyard. Well, what people fail to realize, which is blatantly obvious, is that the only reason that Tyson Fury fought Vladimir Klitschko and Deontay Wilder in their backyards is because he had no other choice. <laughs> it's simple as that. When Fury fought Klitschko, he wasn't in, or Frank Warren wasn't in, the financial or the contractual position to be able to get Vladimir Klitschko to fight Fury in the UK. He did not have the financial or contractual power at that time to get that fight in the UK. If he did, then he would have got it in the UK and Fury would have fought Klitschko in the UK. He didn't, he didn't go over to Germany because he's just such a great warrior and he doesn't care about trying to get fights in the UK in his own backyard. No, that's not the reason that he did it. He did it because he had no other choice. And what people are failing to realize is that, what was it, 80 or 90% of Klitschko's title defenses were in Germany? So it's not like Fury did anything unusual. Everybody was fighting Klitschko in Germany just about back then. There was a handful of fights he had outside of Germany. I think he fought in Switzerland once. He fought in America a couple of times. He fought in Russia against Povetkin. But a vast majority of Klitschko's world title fights were in Germany. His adopted, you know, backyard, the place where he based himself for the majority of his heavyweight reign. So everybody was fighting Klitschko there. Now, you got to give Tyson Fury massive credit for beating Klitschko under the circumstances he beat him with the spongy canvas and all the shenanigans that Klitschko used to play behind the scenes. You have to give Fury massive credit for beating him. But in terms of actually choosing to fight Klitschko there, there wasn't a choice. He had no other choice. He had to fight him there. That's where everybody had to fight Klitschko at the time. If he could have got the fight in the UK, he would have done. And this is proven by the fact that when the Klitschko rematch was scheduled, Frank Warren was in a much better financial and a, a contractual situation. Why? Because for the rematch, Tyson Fury was now the champion. So percentage-wise, he was going to get much more money, a much larger slice of the, of the pie, and therefore Frank Warren would get a much larger slice of the pie. Now, I have to say, uh, Frank Warren got Tyson Fury into the position to fight Klitschko. I don't think he was directly involved with the promotion of the Klitschko fight, okay? But you did get him into the position there. Uh, either way, if it was Mick Hennessy who was involved in promoting the, the Klitschko fight, same thing. Mick Hennessy was never going to be able to get Klitschko to the UK to fight Tyson Fury, was he? That was never going to happen. There was a far less chance of Mick Hennessy being able to do that than there would be Frank Warren. Uh, but either way, for the rematch, because Fury was on a much larger percentage, that means his promoter was on a much larger percentage for the rematch. And they were in a much stronger position contractually. So for the rematch, they were trying to get it in the UK. Why? If, if, if Tyson Fury doesn't care about fighting people in their backyards, why would he insist on the rematch when he had the contractual and financial power being in the UK? And the same for Deontay Wilder. He fought Deontay Wilder in the United States. Massive credit to him for taking that fight when he did and for doing as well as he did in the fight, coming back from his well-documented uh, issues outside the ring. But it's not as if they could get the fight in the UK, is it? Because they asked Frank Warren on multiple occasions, is there any chance of seeing Wilder Fury in the, in the UK? And Frank Warren said, we'd love it in the UK, but America's where the money is. Now, what that basically means is Frank Warren did not have the money to get the fight in the UK. He did not have enough money to pay Deontay Wilder sufficiently to tempt him over to the UK to fight Tyson Fury. That's what that means. So it wasn't an option. 
<laughs> the only way that they could make the fight was to go to Deontay Wilder's backyard. That's the only way it could be done. But now Tyson Fury has got this ESPN deal. And we'll see how it plays out because, you know, some people have said that Tyson Fury is not a particularly entertaining fighter. So his fights on ESPN might actually tank and not do very well. So we'll have to see how it plays out. Uh, but if his ESPN situation goes well and they can build his profile in the United States and he maybe has some homecoming fights in the UK that do well, then we could see Tyson Fury offer Deontay Wilder a rematch in the UK. You know, that's, again, Frank Warren has said this on numerous occasions. We would love Fury versus Wilder in the UK, but America's where the money is, meaning I don't have the money to bring Deontay Wilder over. That's what that means. Now, of course, you say America's where the money is, it's a, 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 a potentially a bigger audience and potentially a bigger market. But Anthony Joshua, as I've mentioned before, against Povetkin, earned more by himself, just his own purse, not Povetkin's purse. Joshua's purse alone was more than Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder's purses combined, including pay-per-view, international pay-per-view on top. And Joshua versus Povetkin was in the UK. So Frank Warren can't be running around acting like, oh, it's impossible to make crazy money in the UK. No, he knows damn well that Anthony Joshua has been made, that Anthony Joshua made more money by himself against Povetkin than Fury and Wilder made against each other in the United States for their first fight. He knows that. And he's been saying that he thinks Tyson Fury is a bigger name than Anthony Joshua in the UK now. Well, if he is, then he will definitely try and get the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight in the UK. Because if, if he's a bigger name than Joshua, then that means Tyson Fury can easily pocket 25 million pounds for a Deontay Wilder rematch in the UK. Yeah, if what Frank Warren is saying is true. <laughs> so you guys let me know what you think in the comment section below. Again, Tyson Fury, fantastic fighter. I know people call me a hater and this, that, and the other. No, but I have to pull Tyson Fury up about some of the untruths that come out of his mouth, okay? And I have to bring his fans down to reality because they get carried away a lot. He's an excellent fighter. He might turn out to be the best of the bunch. You know, we'll have to wait and see when they fight each other. You know, hopefully they will. But let's just slow down a little bit and not crown him the greatest of all time. He's only ever had two world title fights in his whole career. A win and a draw. So let's just wait for his career to play out and we'll see how great Tyson Fury is, you know? Let's, let's, let's not buy into his... Uh, is slick talking, even though he can be a very entertaining character. Let's not get carried away. Let's try and be somewhat objective, even if you like him, in terms of the stuff he says and the way we assess his boxing career and his achievements, you know? Um, going out to fight Wilder and Klitschko in their backyards, that's great. But he did it because he didn't have a choice. <laughs> you know? It's very rare that a champion will go and fight somebody in their backyard if they have a choice not to. If they can make just as much money or close to the same money fighting at home, then they'll do that. In fact, Frank Warren, here's something for you who've been, you know, you guys have been following Frank Warren for a long time. You may remember that Frank Warren used to constantly, constantly criticize Eddie Hearn for sending his fighters over to fight in the United States. Do you remember that? Frank Warren always used to bang on about home advantage. Oh, you're supposed to get home advantage. And yeah, I want my guy... Uh, to have every advantage possible. So that's why I pay all the money to get the fights at home. And sometimes we lose money on the shows, but it's an investment to make sure he gets the title. You know, Frank Warren was constantly criticizing the Hearns for not getting home advantage and not going the extra mile for their fighters to get that home advantage. So don't for a second think that if Frank Warren couldn't, uh, it, 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 that if Frank Warren could, he wouldn't try and get the Wilder fight in the UK. Of course he would. <laughs> it's whether or not he has the money and it's whether or not Tyson Fury can generate 
the kind of pay-per-view sales in the UK to justify paying Wilder the kind of money that Wilder would want for the rematch. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. It's happening, I'm out. Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week covering a wide variety of controversial topics as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.